A true story. Long ago, a great king sent out emissaries throughout the civilized world to discover what religion would be best for his kingdom. Upon their return from Constantinople, his emissaries said, And we went into the Greek lands, and we were led into a place where they serve their god, and we did not know where we were, on heaven or on earth, and do not know how to tell about this. All we know is that God lives there with people, and that their service is better than in any other country. Byzantium. While European culture was in its inception, the seat of Rome had been moved to the east, to a city once known as Byzantium. Renamed Constantinople in 330 AD after the great emperor and founder Constantine I. Born out of the classical age which would reign for over a thousand years, a golden age which witnessed the flourishing of politics, science and the arts. Byzantium also produced the musical culture which would form the basis for all European classical music and its modern popular successors. Byzantine music has survived into the present age and is in fact the oldest extant musical system on earth. This documentary will take a closer look at Byzantine music, its history, its special characteristics and its continued use today. We will journey to ancient monasteries and thriving cities to speak with living practitioners of this ancient tradition. Northern Greece, situated on the shimmering Aegean coast. Home to what was the second most important city in the Byzantine Empire, and now the second largest city in Greece, Thessaloniki. <laughs> It is now a thriving modern metropolis with a rich history, filled with a treasury of historical sites and monuments from the classical Byzantine and Ottoman periods. The living tradition of Byzantine music has been preserved here over the centuries, still chanted in its ancient churches preserved in the Byzantine rite by the devoted Orthodox community. The Saloniki is considered the world's foremost center for the study of Byzantine music. leading figure in the field is Professor Dimitris Manousis. He has toured extensively with his choir, has produced numerous renowned recordings and is sought after worldwide for his expertise in the study and performance of Byzantine music. We are here in his church in the center of Thessaloniki, where he is the head chanter or protopsaltis. Similar to the Kapellmeister of the German tradition, the Protopsaltis is responsible for all of the musical activities of the church. All of the services are chanted, and the material varies daily and by liturgical season. Well, first of all, we must uh, mention it that our main purpose about the music is the words, the text. The music is the, the, the way to express the meaning of the text. In fact, until this day, Byzantine music remains an exclusively vocal tradition, 
the purpose of which is to enrich the experience of worship in a ceremonial or liturgical context. Hence it is often referred to simply as Byzantine chant. Byzantine music has remained monophonic, meaning it features a single melodic line, often with a sparse accompaniment of sustained notes similar to a drone. This allows the meaning of the text to be the central point of focus. It is very important that Byzantine music it used in the church for uh, 15 centuries, maybe 13th century, from 8th century when Saint Ioannis Damaskinos created the eight modes, the Octoichos book. And until today we have the same modes, the same music, different notation, because we have a progress about the sizes and the shapes. And uh, every day we, you, we, we use the Byzantine music for the ceremonies of Christian Orthodox Church. The term Byzantine music refers to the music from the founding of Constantinople in 330 AD to the present day. However, it did not emerge out of a cultural vacuum, rather it is a continuation and further development of the music of ancient Greece, which is presumed to have been lost in the annals of history. Scholarly attempts to reconstruct this music have mostly failed to consult the living tradition which is its legacy. Entering an orthodox service today, one experiences a direct continuation of the music of the ancient classical world. We say the word uh, Byzantio, it is a period of the history from the 4th century until 15th century uh, when uh, the empire of uh, Saint Constantinus the Great moved the capital of the empire from Rome to Constantinopolis and he created a new history with a different way of life, a different civilization, a different art, different religion. The Byzantine music was the music of the empire. We have some, uh, some rules, some principles from the ancient Greek music. And from the music of Jewish Israel. Like the hymnography, the poets of the Christianity, Christian hymnography, they used some rules from the philosophy, yeah. from the ancient philosophy. <laughs> From the early days of Christianity's inception, many pious souls moved out of the cities in search of greater peace for their devotions, leading to the founding of the first monasteries in the deserts of Palestine and Egypt, and later throughout the Christian world. Simultaneous to the development of Byzantine music in the great cities of the empire, another musical stream developed in its monasteries. Byzantine music thus has its origins in the city and in the desert, the cities giving rise to the music of ceremony and procession, and the monasteries to psalmody and the music of reflection. Journeying southwest of Thessaloniki, we approach one of the wonders of the world, the place between heaven and earth, Meteora. with its monolithic pillars of stone extending into the skies, upon which are thriving monasteries perched seemingly precariously, dating back to the 13th century. Here we will have a little glimpse into the musical life of the monastic tradition. A 
solitary monk sings, raising his voice in prayer in his monastery. Having been born in Bayreuth, Germany to Greek parents, Father Avercius lived on Holy Mount Athos for 15 years before settling at the monastery of Varlam in Meteora. He has granted us the rare privilege of an interview about his musical education and practice. Father Avercius is also a highly accomplished player of the Pondic Lyre, which he uses as a helpful supplement in exploring the Byzantine modes. Although a variety of instruments were used throughout the Byzantine Empire in a secular folk context, the music of the church is exclusively vocal. The use of instruments and services is strictly prohibited. Das habe ich alleine gelernt. Und da, damals gab es auch fast keine Videos, selten. Und nur Kassetten mit einem simplen Kassettenrekorder und nichts mehr. Da habe ich langsam auch die byzantinische Musik gelernt. Und dann äh, strebte ich mich an, das in Instrument zu finden wie man das, wie, wie diese Klimaken und all das äh, war, um das auch besser zu verstehen. Instrument, was vom Pontos kommt und normalerweise drei Streichen hat, habe ich das äh, mit fünf Streichen gemacht, damit ich da die ganzen Klimagas von äh, der byzantinischen Musik leichter spielen kann. Ähm, das äh, Einzigartige ist, dass Keiner mir das gezeigt hat. Ich habe also die byzantinische Musik in dieses Instrument äh, hervorgebracht. During our visit to Meteora, we also had the opportunity to speak with Spiros Spiridonas, the protopsaltis of the great Meteora monastery and head of the choir Meteoritico Psaltieri. He initially studied theology at the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. I am the first psalmist of the Monies of the Great Meteor. I was born in 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 the Great Meteor. Με την πρωτοβουλία του γέροντο του Νίφωνο, ο οποίο είναι ηγούμενο εδώ στη Μονή, μαζεύτηκε δίπλα μου μια αρκετά μεγάλη ομάδα νέων παιδιών και ξεκινήσαμε μια πολύ όμορφη πρωτοβουλία με τη στήριξη εδώ του γέροντα. Κάναμε ένα χορό που τον ονομάσαμε Μετεωρήτικο Ψαλτήρι και σιγά σιγά όλα τα παιδιά που τελειώνουν από τη σχολή τη Μητροπόλη, τη Μητροπόλη του Σταγών και Μετεώρων, εντάσσονται σε αυτόν τον χορό και έχει δημιουργηθεί μια ωραία φιλική πιο πολύ ομάδα παρά μπορώ να πω κάτι ιδιαίτερο επιστημονικό με αυτή την έννοια. Αυτό που λέμε βυζαντινή μουσική είναι λάθος και σαν ορολογία. Ε, καλύτερα θα έπρεπε να μιλάμε για ελληνική εκκλησιαστική μουσική. Ο όρος Βυζάντιο ή Βυζαντινός είναι ένα κατασκεύασμα μεταγενέστερο, άρα και αδόκιμος όρος επιστημονικά και απορώ γιατί περίφημοι οι λεγόμενοι βυζαντινολόγοι, άλλοι ιστορικοί ακόμα το διατηρούν εφόσον είναι ένας ψευδεπίγραφος για μένα και ιστορικά λάθος όρος. Με 
Meteoro Kegio Norus ήταν ένα πολύ άρρηκτο δεσμό και ήταν στην άσυνδε διμενάρα. Μιλάμε για το λεγόμενο γεωρήτικο ύφο στην ουσία. Εντάξει, με ίσω κάποια μικρή τοπική παραλλαγή, αλλά μιλάμε για γεωρήτικο ύφο. Για μετέωρα ακολουθούσαν αυτό το ύφο. Η τραδιτσιανέλτη αρτ είναι στην κλέστα. Mount Athos, the holy mountain, is a peninsula in northern Greece in the area of Chalkidiki, known as a monastic republic and the last living remnant of the Byzantine Empire. The centerpiece of Christendom for the Orthodox world, Mount Athos is home to over 2,000 monks in more than 20 monasteries and innumerable skeets throughout the peninsula. The Athenite tradition is a living reservoir, preserving the customs and practices of ancient Christianity from its earliest days and continues to guard innumerable manuscripts, priceless icons, relics, and other precious treasures. Among the countless manuscripts are to be found some of the most important documents about Byzantine music. In fact, the Holy Mountain is home to the most pure and highest quality chant in the world. There is a strong connection of mutual influence between the monasteries of Mount Athos and the leading protopsaltis in the cities. The Mitris Manusis, for example, has trained the choir of the monastery of Simono Petra, considered to have some of the finest chant on the holy mountain. Each year, Mount Athos attracts thousands of pilgrims from all over the world to retreat from the bustle of ordinary life and experience a taste of the Athenite tradition. hat äh, Regeln, die man nicht äh, leicht äh, lassen kann. Und früher war es auch sehr streng. Man konnte nicht, was man möchte, schreiben. Es musste von den Regeln auskommen und die Regeln waren sehr streng. Es gab viele Töne von den Altgriechen und äh, Der heilige Johannes hatte die acht, nur acht Töne äh, in, für die Kirche gehalten, weil sie die bessere, die bestimmende Töne sind, um zu beten. Sie helfen, die Gläubigen zu beten. In Western Music Temperament or the intervals or distances between notes has become more or less standardized into two intervals, a half tone and a whole tone. In Byzantine music, however, many more intervals can be heard, varying according to the different modes, as is frequently the case in Eastern music. There are eight modes in Byzantine music, also called tones, coming from the Greek word ichos, and thus known as the octo ichos, or eight modes. These eight modes were directly inherited from the musical system of the ancient Greeks. A mode is not simply a scale that must be learnt. Rather, each mode creates a distinctive musical atmosphere with different intervallic relationships and characteristic melodic phrases and cadences. The different modes accompany the faithful through different liturgical seasons, types of worship and feasts, it is also possible to modulate between modes in a single composition to create certain effects, often to better fit with the text. The Byzantine music, the legomeni Byzantine music, the Hellenic ecclesiastic music, as I like to say, is the only music in the world with a geographical geography, mainly for the 10th century. Byzantine music was originally an oral tradition passed down from generation to generation. The earliest forms of notation were mnemonic supplements to scriptural texts. 
indicating certain movements of the voice, but required substantial experience and expertise in order to interpret. The next phase of notation from about the 9th century comprised a more nuanced system of symbols that could accurately convey increasingly complex and ornate musical material. This notation is particularly well suited to monophonic music, often complex, heavily ornamented melodies either without any harmony whatsoever or only accompanied by a drone. As this system became increasingly complex and cryptic, it was reformed in the early 19th century into the system still in use today. To give a brief example of how this system works, let us take a look at some individual characters. The mode is always indicated at the beginning and the starting pitch is given by a letter. The ison indicates the repetition of a previous note, neither ascending nor descending. The oligon indicates ascending one note according to the mode. An apostrophos, which resembles an apostrophe, indicates descending one pitch, again according to the mode. Other characters indicate intervallic leaps, measures of time or note duration, and the manner of execution. For example, the petisti indicates ascending one note with something like a trill in the voice. There are also characters of expression, which are added to other characters and indicate ornamentation that could be executed in a number of ways depending on context and tradition. Similar to Western notation, dots and curved lines like ties indicate extending the rhythmic duration of a note. One of the fascinating things about Byzantine music is that it has a lineage of prolific composers almost entirely unknown in the West. Indeed, the so-called octoikos, the system of eight modes inherited by the later tradition of Ambrosian and Gregorian chant, and thus all subsequent European music, was solidified and formalized by the great poet and composer Saint John of Damascus. Here we can uh, see the two most famous uh, poets of the Byzantine hymnography, the Saint Ioannis from Damascus and uh, the Saint Cosmas, the poet, the Bishop of uh, Mayuma. They live together in the Saint Sava Monastery of uh, Palestine. And uh, we have many chants from there, from their uh, work. And uh, we have all the ceremonies, all the big events, we have their chants. The monastery of Saint Sabas in the Palestinian desert, where Saint John of Damascus and Saint Cosmas lived and worked, was also home to the great poet and hymnographer Saint Romanos the Melodist. Saint Romanos the Melodist is famous for pioneering the Kontakion, one of the most important forms in Byzantine music. He composed some of the most famous hymns still used throughout the liturgical year. Like Saint John of Damascus, Saint Romanos hails from what would be present-day Syria, along with one of the other great poets of the tradition, Saint Ephrem the Syrian known as the harp of the spirit due to the sublime beauty of his sacred verses. Of course, there is a long lineage of great composers. First of all, and the most famous, Saint John of Cucuzelis, was uh, the teacher of the palace in uh, Byzantine, in Constantinopolis, and after that, he lived as a monk in uh, Mount Athos. John Cladas, uh, 14th century, uh, Georgios Contopetris, uh, Manuel Chrysafis, the last chanter of Saint Sophia. It is incredible how little attention these great poets and hymnographers have received in the West. Only very recently have scholars begun to make them the subject of research. To give an idea of the importance of these poets who are venerated as saints, Nine-tenths of the service book of the Orthodox Church is comprised of poetry, a poetry which is largely unknown in the West, and most of which remains untranslated to this day. As has 
has been mentioned, we find the roots of all Western music in the system used in Byzantine chant, which was later transferred to the Western countries and where it evolved into other forms. In Book 9 of St. Augustine's Confessions, it is written, It was at this time that the practice was instituted of singing hymns and psalms after the manner of the Eastern churches to keep the people from being altogether worn out with anxiety and want of sleep. The custom has been retained from that day to this and has been imitated by many, indeed in almost all congregations throughout the world. In this section, Augustine is discussing the church in Milan and the influence of his teacher St. Ambrose, who is known and credited with having introduced hymnody from the East into the Western Church. Ambrosian chant is the oldest form and the only other plain chant alongside Gregorian to be formally sanctioned by the Roman Catholic Church. All subsequent forms of Western classical music and its popular derivatives can be traced back to plain chant. Here is a picture of the earliest extant manuscript of pneumatic notation with the original Greek neumes on the left and a translation into Latin on the right. The Byzantines also had a detailed method of conducting in which the protopsaltis uses particular hand gestures to communicate tempo, musical line, and ornamentation. In addition to leading and training the choir and chanting at a high level of accomplishment, one of the main challenges of the professional protopsaltis is to gain a thorough knowledge of the vast material of liturgical music spread out in innumerable volumes, each with its own special purpose and style of execution. The protopsaltis must not only be able to chant all of this material, he must also know exactly what needs to be chanted and when with the repertoire changing daily and according to liturgical season. You can see this book is the Mineon. It is the book with the ceremonies of November month. You can see the 17th of this day, of this month, Saint Gregorius of uh, the Bishop of Neo Caesarea. Here, is, it is paracliticky, octoichos, the main work of Saint Ioannis from Damasco. It has the, the chance for the Saturday evening, sat, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Monday morning, Monday evening, this is for the first mode, but we have all the chants for the eight modes, for the eight weeks. Another uh, book is the Apostolos. We have the chapters from the actions of Apostolos and the letters of uh, Saint uh, Paul, Saint Peter, Saint John. Here we have the Orologion. We have the chants, especially from the, the Psalms of David, that uh, we use them for the Vespers, Matins, especially. And I have here the Anastasimatarion. The Anastasimatarion is the, the music composes for the Saturday evening and Sunday morning when we celebrate the Anastasis of Jesus Christ. Here it is a book for the central of our life, the Holy Liturgy, with cherubical uh, chants, with kinonica chants. Uh, this is the central of our life, the central the center of uh, celebration to take the Holy Communion. Whether we call it Byzantine music or Hellenic ecclesiastical music, 
In addition to being the source of subsequent European music, it is also shared globally over vast geographical regions. In the churches of the Middle East and Africa, the Coptics, Russia, the Balkans, the Antiochians, not to mention the churches of the Greek and Russian diaspora worldwide, uniting all of these diverse nations in worship. What has become one of the most beloved hymns is the Agni Parthenia, Holy Virgin. Here it is sung in Greek, Russian, Arabic, etc. Holy. This documentary has only provided a brief glimpse into the history and characteristics of Byzantine music, with over 1,000 years of continuous tradition and practice. Nonetheless, it has sought to cast light on this collective blind spot in the West. Through what is called Byzantine music, the faithful have been elevated beyond the monotony of material existence, transported into a state of spiritual ecstasy into greater communion with each other and the divine to experience a taste of paradise on earth. It is something different from the life in our house, in our uh, society. Uh, here is the, a place that we, we take a small view of the paradise life. The encounter with Byzantine music allows us not only to gain knowledge of the roots of Western music in its entirety, of our collective musical heritage. Through the synergy of word and tone, we are invited to enter into an elevated state with a musical tradition that serves to coalesce earth with the heavens in majestic worship, a tradition that has carried on in an unbroken chain. To echo the words of the Psalms, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will chant unto my God for as long as I have my being. I 
So oh. 